Well, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. And I'm so happy to be here today for week five of the Scrappiness is Happiness Quilt Along, where we are using my latest book and going through and making all 32 of the blocks in 32 weeks. So one block a week. And this is the sampler quilt, if you would like to make it, um, that I did so that it would all be um, all compiled of all 32 blocks and one on the back for the label. And so today we're doing the Happy Trails block, which you need one of right here. This is a free PDF download, like the settings. Of course, all the block instructions are in here, and then I do tutorials for each block. But um, so I have a link here in the description of this video to for the PDF download of that. But here are the blocks that we're doing, Happy Trails. So it's made of four segments that are exactly the same. You just turn them like this. So I went ahead and did a couple of blocks and uh, using my prairie fabric, just because I have that out and I've been playing with it. So I thought it would be really fun to have a couple of blocks out of that. And so um, within the pattern, I always tell you, let's see, this is on page 44. So happy trails block. I always tell you in the little recipe section down here what scrap bins that I use for cutting. And so I have my one and a half inch strips and I have my five inch scrap basket. And I also want to show you an alternate cutting as well. But what I do with my one and a half inch strips are for this because we need to do checkerboard segments like this that are all the same, okay? It's much easier instead of cutting squares to cut strips. For, so for one segment of each block, meaning four, you need a 14 inch long strip of each one, the background and the color that you're going to use. And I think it's really smart, whenever I've made this quilt, to use a really prominent color in those little squares. And then what I do, um, I keep leaning in, so I need to just keep this block here. So, and then because I'm using red in this, I won't use any red for the prints so that it blends. I'll use all colors, you know, in my scrap bin or from one collection, you know, depending on how I'm doing the quilt, I just will make sure I don't do any red in there so that red really shines. So that's kind of a suggestion that I have when cutting that. And so all you do after you've cut these is simply sew them together. And of course, I'll show you that at the machine, I'll do that. But because I'm here at the cutting station, I kind of wanted to show you how I do that. Um, square them up like that. So you're gonna sew them together, okay? You're gonna press them open. And then I like to use my one and a half inch ruler. This is a one and a half by six and a half. And what you need to do is you need to cut eight segments from here that are one and a half inch wide. And you know, you've got a little bit of room on each end, so you don't have to, you know, we're gonna trim that end off. So all I do, because this is a one and a half inch wide, I just pick a line a solid line that you can see and put right there on the seam, you know, making sure it's not going like this or something like this. I want it, you know, nice and straight. I just simply set that on there. I love this ruler. I use it all the time for things like this. I love it because I can hold it down from each end, but because it's only one and a half inch wide, then I'll trim the end of that off later. Then it's just really easy for me to line that up and get it right on that line and cut those segments that I need to. All right, so that's what I do with that, making sure that it's on a line, it's all squared up. And so I just go ahead and cut eight from there. And, you know, I can go ahead and finish the rest off camera, but this first one that needed to be trimmed off, I simply just put it there and trim off those ends. And you'll be able to easily get eight out of that 14 inch strip. And so what you're going to do after that 
is, you know, that's taken care of, that cutting. Now you need to cut your two four and a half inch squares and four two and a half inch squares, all from the same print, okay? So when I'm working out of my five inch strips, this is easy peasy. I can cut a bunch of scrappy, scrappy blocks from this. And what I do with that is, um, because these are five inches and I need two four and a half, then it's easy to just go ahead and take my four and a half inch square ruler, place it there. And I simply just cut that top off. Turn that around and trim up the other kind of little leftover edges that I had that weren't straight. Okay, so I've got one four and a half inch square. I'm gonna do that again. Okay, so there's the two that I need. Now, you're like, why don't you just cut these four and a half inch strips um, instead of five? And this is exactly why I don't, because now I can cut my four two and a half inch squares just by cutting a five inch square, or simply just by going in two and a half inches, lining everything up, two and a half inches, and I can put these on top of each other. And I'd like to bring a smaller ruler in. I could have brought my two and a half inch square, I guess. But anyway, then I just have to cut like that and I've got four two and a half inch squares and I'm all ready, you know, and I'm cut for that block right there. Here's the leftover of my strip. This strip happened to be, that you need to do this, you need like about a 15 inch long strip. So when you're going through your five inch strip baskets before you start cutting into it, just know that you need about 15 inches long. Just go ahead and put it on your mat. Make sure it's 15 inches long before you start cutting all your pieces because they do need to match. And so this is what I have left over. It's more than a five inch square or a four and a half inch square. So I just end up putting it back in my bucket. If there was you know, a little bit less, then I would just cut squares or whatever I could out of this and put them in their buckets. But because I have enough left to do something else with that, um, I'm gonna go put it back in my strips. And okay, so because this block works out differently that you could use something else like a pre-cut to cut it with, I wanted to show you that. So. Right here, I've got um, some open 10 inch stackers of Prairie that I've been working with. And you can get from one 10 inch square, you can get um, two four and a half inch squares and four, uh, excuse me, yeah, did I say that right? Two four and a half inch squares and four two and a half inch squares easily out of a stacker. And so you could do that l with your leftover 10 inch squares, a stacker, simply is Riley Blake's pre-cut for 10 inch squares. That's what we call our, you know, we have five inch stackers, 10 inch stackers. Uh, somebody asked me what a stacker was. So I thought, well, maybe I better clarify that. So I wanted to show you how I cut with a 10 inch square for this block. And sometimes, you know, when we're buying these pre-cuts, we have leftover 10 inch squares. And I also have a basket that I just put my leftover 10 inch squares in and they're all mixed up different collections and stuff because a lot of the times we don't use up every, all 42 in the pre-cuts. We'll end up using like 38 or, you know, maybe 32, 36, whatever. And so the leftover 10 inch squares, I just put in a bin. And so this quilt is perfect for that. So what I do is I wanna cut crossways like this to get two four and a half inch but see how I'm measuring past these little pinking marks, the little zigzag marks. I do not like to sew with those and you don't have to in this particular, um, you know, cutting because we're cutting down, we're not cutting five inch squares from it, we're cutting four and a half. So we have a little bit of room that we can trim those off, okay? And then you can either fold it like this or do them singly, but it's like, why not fold them? Go in, let me grab my four and a half inch square and you can see that I've got plenty of room 
from each side. In fact, it's green on green, so what I'm going to do is fold it wrong side out so you can kind of see the lines better. So see, I just simply hold it on there. I know it's four and a half inches tall because I cut that strip that way. And sometimes I use my smaller mat that I just put these on so that I can rotate them. But this, this is my new, one of my new large cute cut mats in the pink. It's so cute, I love it. So for this purpose, because I'm just cutting singly. Okay, so I've got my two four and a half inch squares. And then what I'm gonna do here is cut two. I'm always having to make sure I'm centered in the camera here. I'm gonna cut two, two and a half inch strips from the remaining of this. Okay, and then I'm gonna lay those on top of each other. And you know, I'm gonna end up cutting those little zigzag edges off. So I just measure over over that little past from two and a half. And notice when I move my fabric, I slide it. I don't pick it up and move it because I don't wanna separate it or distort it. So I just slide it as much as I can. Okay, so I've got two, two and a half inch because I'm doing double cutting two layers at a time, two more. So there's four, that's enough for my block. So I can put it over here. And then I've got remaining strips here. So this is what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna cut two, two and a half inch squares for leftovers. And because I can't get two and a half there, but I can get two inches. Now these two inch squares I have a big bin of, and that's why I ended up designing my grandma's donuts quilt that's in this book. And so I'm gonna save those for other projects in the book. And I just wanted to show you that, you know, again, I told you I have a bowl. I showed you last time. A lot of times I'll just go ahead and throw them in here, my leftovers so I can sort through them later. But these are my leftovers that I have, my two and a half inch and my two inch from cutting these blocks right here. And so that's how you kind of grow your stash of leftovers and make your own customized, you know, pre-cut sizes. And it's really fun. And again, I have a two and a half inch square bin and I have a two inch square bin that I'll throw those in. And I use my muffin pins often because it helps me to sort things. And I just, they're vintage and I just spray paint them to match my sewing room. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna show you how to sew one segment using, you know, these plus these that I've already trimmed off. I'll go ahead and finish cutting these. And I'm gonna show you how to make one corner of the block because all four corners are the same. And so I will get over to the sewing machine and we'll start sewing. Okay, here we are, and today I'm sewing with Miss Doris, named after Doris Day. And so I know that I cut, you know, these eight segments right here, but I just wanted to show you that, you know, I don't really have to do it and show you, but when I, um, well, let me just do it. Let me just do it, instead of trying to explain it, right? <laughs> That's why I'm here. So I just used a quarter inch seam allowance right here on this blue line. And I just try to follow right on the line, not past it or right under it, but it's a, that's why I made it wider. So you can just kind of try to follow right in the middle. And when I'm sewing strips, because they're long and could easily get distorted, then I normally do pin. But because the purpose of these strips is just to subcut them into these one and a half by two and a half inch pieces. It doesn't matter if they meet at the end. We have plenty of room, you know, on the on each end, so I'm not too worried about that with pinning. And but I kind of really wanted to talk to you not as much about the sewing as the pressing. 
So when I'm doing my seams open with long strips, and this is this is kind of short, but I always set my seams. And when I do that, I'll kind of pull like this because when you're sewing long strips, they tend to curve after you've pulled it out of the machine a little bit. Not that dramatic, but they curve a little bit. So I always just, you know, kind of tug on that and set the seam so it's straight and that helps it in the first place before you even press it open to, you know, to be straight and not distorted. And then when I am doing this, I just start right here and open it. And even if you don't, you know, you can have short fingernails, long fingernails, whatever, you're gonna have something there that you can just kind of um, open it like that all the way so that you can see those threads and feel that there's not gonna be a pleat in there. I just start that way and I start with my iron and I just follow with my finger and I'm just opening it as I go. If I don't do this and just run it through like that, chances are it's not going to be flat. So that's kind of a tip that I've just always learned. And then of course, I'm gonna use the clappers to absorb that heat. And you know, that's all I'm gonna say about that because I've already shown you you know, how to subcut them. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just simply gonna chain these four pieces. I'm just gonna show you how to make one segment. And so you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you flip them around. And because the seams are open, you're going to have an easy time lining those up. I don't start by lining up here. I usually start by lining up right there. And then, you know, because they were all cut from the same way. I mean, it just automatically lines up at the end. So I start running that through the machine. Okay, now I'm gonna run a couple of these through and again, make sure they're turned so that they're opposite from each other. Now, if you're worried where these seams line up, this is where I use my um, double pins here. And I show these once in a while when I do use pins. Let me show you how I use these. So I just do that, normally line that up. And these double pins look like this, and they're not meant to pin in this way and pin up. That totally distorts. I literally just pin in just so that it goes in just a little bit. I mean, that's probably an eighth of an inch. And you can see that that's exactly where they're supposed to meet up. If you don't feel like it is, you can always go like this and, you know, repin, put it down here. But I find that if you go like this and just pin in a little bit, then you start right here. You can sew over these pins if you want to, just go slow. And, once it's gone through the first pin, I usually just take the second one out. But what's great about that is because it's two pins at the same time that you're pinning on each seam allowance so that it doesn't have room in between here for any wiggling so those seams are gonna line up. And so you can use those that way if you feel like your seams are not lining up. This is what my first one looked like. Seeing it lined up perfectly. Um, let's see what the second one did. Again, that was perfectly before I can see this one that I pinned with the double pins. I'm gonna go ahead and run this one through. And so I usually just start it and then I just make my fabric meet down at the bottom after I've lined up the center. Let's see if it made a difference or distorted it when pinning. I find sometimes See, that's perfect as well. That's why I don't like to pin like this because I find that that distorts it and just like takes the whole point out of pinning for me. So that's why I usually never pin. I just hold it with my fingers. I just line seams up and and I just worry about what which seams are going under the machine next. I don't worry about all the seams coming up. I just do each section at a time as you know I'm doing a block. Okay, so I've got these four over here put this aside for another section and to trim off. Let's put that there. 
And so I usually always try to remember to set my seams first. And without distorting the blocks, I just try to put the iron straight down. And then I do the same thing that I showed you is I always kind of start by opening it up. Use a clapper. Another thing I do when I want to make sure that my seams are open all the way, flat and not distorted, is I can just, especially in the middle here, where they all meet, I want to run my seam roller over and that really helps a lot too. So I'm just gonna quickly open these up, feeling that they're open all the way before I apply the iron to the top. And I know this is a lot of repetitive stuff, but I'm just here to show you what I do. So, you know, this, this is how I iron. So I'm always saying the same thing over and over again because that's what I do. But I hope that you get, you know, some tips from this. There's always lots of different ways to do things. I'm just here to show you how I do things and, you know, through my experience of quilting, what I've learned. And so, you know, that's kind of all I can do. And so over here, I'm going to lay out the block. I either always have a picture in the book or a block to go by, so I'm just going to lay this out exactly how it is there so I don't get anything turned. So just know that you're going to sew a segment all like this with all the red going down the middle, so you'll have to turn those squares that way. But you don't have to worry about that that's just automatic when you turn all the other ones. If you sew the remaining three exactly like this one, they're all going to work out. Okay, so let me grab these. Those clappers, I'm sure, did their job and they're cooled down. And here I've got this cute little four patch that was so easy to make and so easy to make accurate. So what I'm going to do here is lay them out exactly how I need them to be, and that is the red going this way, all in a diagonal line. You know, be careful not to turn one like that because you're gonna lose your pattern. That's exactly why I called this block Happy Trails because it looks like a little trail, you know, of that color going through all those squares of blocks, you know, which is reminiscent to a, to a variation on an Irish chain. But for this, I, I wanted different solid colored blocks. So to be in the background. And then I simply just chain piece these by picking these up right off the design board, knowing that I've already laid them, laid them out correctly. So I'm not worried about if I'm sewing the wrong side to what side. I do like to flip usually when I have two pieces that have piecing in it and just a plain fabric, I usually like to have my seams up just so that I can see what I'm doing and make sure they don't get flipped underneath when I can't see so that I don't have to unpick to make sure that my seams remain open how I press them. Okay, we've got one more here. And I find these design boards very invaluable when you're laying out blocks. And they really help you in not making mistakes. So hopefully, because I laid it out correctly, all of those are going to be the correct direction. So I'm just going to clip these apart. Bring them over here. And as per usual, set the seams. And then for these, I'm going to press towards the solid square. And normally what I do, should have done that, but because two can go easily go next to each other, I'll just do that and put my clapper that way. But because I already did that single one, I'll finish off with this. 
Just want to make sure they're completely open all the way. When I set my clappers on, I usually don't, I don't know if I've told you this before, but I usually don't just press that open like that and then just lay my clapper down. I don't know if you've noticed, but I usually kind of go like this and kind of use it as a secondary iron, making sure that when I put that on there that it's still open. So I put it down and slide it across like we would an iron. I hope that makes sense. And then I think these are cool enough. Normally I'd let them sit there for a minute longer. But at this point, whenever I'm using a design board that I need to make sure in the block that things are going the right direction, between each step, I just go ahead and lay it out again. And so there we go. There we go. I'm assuming you can see that, sis. Do you need yep. to pick that up? Yeah. No, we can see. Yeah, so it just looks like that. And then I'm just gonna sew these two together like this, bring it over. And again, I'm gonna start with these center seams here, line those up because that's what's most important in the quilt block. Because if you're off just a touch on the ends here, although you can see how I make this work, and this is exactly why I don't like to starch my fabric real heavy. This is just a personal choice for me because I like my fabric to have some give. I don't like it so stiff that I cannot manipulate my fabric. Because I just feel like I'm the boss of my own quilt block and I wanna make it work. I don't wanna run it under the machine and hope that it comes out right. I. I want to be able to manipulate that and be in charge of it. So. Okay, so now I've got those two going. And now this part right here I'm going to choose to press open because I've got patchwork on both sides and they are small and so so you can make sure before I do that I usually do open up just to make sure you know everything met up how it was supposed to meet up and this is where I really like to use my seam roller a lot when I open it like this and just roll it flat now, my seam roller is flat this way. If there's a curve on it, I found that it distorts the block easily and because you're putting pressure on that curve. And so again, that's just my personal, you know, preference on what I have found out through my own experience, but that's all I can do, right? And I'm gonna do that. Roll this over, especially across the seams right there. And then I just know it's completely open. This is what helps your blocks to be more accurate, making sure that it's those seams are completely open. And that's why another reason I like to press open so that I can see that because when I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna throw that on there. If I was to press to one side like here. You can see how much much flatter this is right here. Like that is a flat seam. But because I press to one side, that automatically takes up a little bit of width. I don't know if I wanna say width or thickness of that fabric. And it's just gonna be a little bit smaller because of pressing to one side instead of open, completely open and flat where the threads meet like this. And so, you know, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you do press to one side, but it makes it harder for that block to become accurate when you have a lot of seams lined up, a lot of piecing, and especially in a smaller block. And if each little um, seam is off by just a minuscule amount, by the time you add up those seams, right? Say you have 12 seams, add those by 12 minuscule amounts, then, you know, that could be a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch or whatever. So that's that's just kind of my reasoning and you know my experience and when, why i started pressing seams open a long time ago so anyway that's what that looks like 
And so now I go over here and again, making sure that I'm putting them the right direction. And then it's just simply time to sew these together. And yes, it definitely helps to have a sample block or definitely a photo from the book. So you can see when I started putting this under here, I started right here so that they lined up. And this looks a little teeny bit short. Well, I just make it not be short by I start sewing. Like I'll put that there. You know, cotton is supposed to have a little bit of give. And look, just by, just by kind of lining it up to that point, it automatically, look, that's perfect how it ends up in the end. And when I say stretching, it makes it sound like I'm like super stretching it out of place to make it work, which I'm not doing that at all. I'm just kind of, maybe stretching is not the word, but I'm just kind of pulling, pulling it a little bit just so that it lines up flat. So by the time I pull this flat, then it lines up at the end. And so that's, that's why I don't pin. And honestly, I'm not trying to tell you not to pin. I'm just, just trying to, again, explain what I do. And that's all I can do. That doesn't mean it's right or wrong way. It's, it's right way for me. And that's all I can say. Set my seams. All this repetitive stuff. And because this is Plane right here. I'm going to go ahead and make the iron do its job by opening this and following it with the iron. And then opening this all the way, just kind of pulling it this way a little bit, just a little tug to make sure it's completely open. And of course, I could have pressed this from the back side if I wanted to, but see how you can't really get to that open seam. When I'm doing something like this, I like to press from the top just so that I can get to that and make sure it's completely open. Okay, now that I just reheated that, I'm gonna let that cool down for just a second. And bring this back over. I just know that that's the way I'm going to sew them together and I can see that my red goes like this. And once again, I'm gonna line up these center seams to make sure they're lined up. I'll show you how to use the double pin once again. If, let's see, where'd I put that? Oh, I didn't even put it back in my pin cushion. A lot of times I'll just set it right there <laughs> and use it as I go along. So I just make sure that these are nesting right there and I just stick that in. Okay, and then because I know that seam is taken care of, I'll just go ahead and line these up in the beginning. Make sure these are lined up at the edge here, right on my seam allowance. I love the sound of these little featherweights. They're just like tick, tick, ticking along. It's kind of like a little comforting sound, like um, the washing machine or the dryer or something, you know, when you were as a kid. That was comforting to me. And then I just go along and see these are meeting up exactly how they're supposed to be. If they weren't, I would be adjusting it at this point. There we go. And then the final step is putting that back into my pickup truck, pressing the seams trimming off my little scrap that I forgot to do. And then again, I'm just making this adjustment with the roller as I go along, opening with my fingers, making sure I can feel that it's open and applying pressure to that roller. And then that way, it's already open all the way and the iron is going to do the rest of the job. I'm not ironing, I'm pressing. I have a good hot iron. I wanna make sure it's heated up good. And then I'll just put that on sideways like that and let that cool. And so we'll let that cool for just a minute and we'll just chat about these. So I've just made a couple of these blocks. I was looking at the measurements because this, this segment right here when we finish it is going to be eight and a half inches unfinished and it'll be eight inches inside the block. 
so which obviously makes this a 16 inch square finished which this would make a great pillow you can buy 16 inch square pillow forms but you can also buy 16 by 32 pillow forms they're like a bed pillow size so I thought it would be really cute to, let's see, maybe I would do it like, I don't know. I don't want to sew those together. I want to put two colors together, maybe like that. Sew them together like that. That would be a really cute pillow sham. Um, also, it's obvious, and what do I always say? <laughs> I'm always saying the same thing. But look at that table runner would be, so just do as many blocks as you want, and it would be a 16 inch wide table runner which is a really great size and you could make three blocks four blocks long however long you wanted to do it this would also look great across the mantle and you could do this in christmas fabrics and do a christmas table runner for across the mantle and speaking of christmas fabrics i did have a method to my madness here about doing red and green because like i say i've designed this quilt uh, lot, several years ago. I put it in my original scrappy project planner. This is one of my bonus quilts that I've done for so many years and so many different versions of it. And I have seen this done in Christmas colors, but would this not be so cute in just all different greens? You could just grab all the greens from your five inch um, strip basket or find 10 inch squares that are green or just cut, you know, from uh, your own 10 inch squares. Um, from greens and if you had a variety of greens all of these being green and just had the red going through I just think that would be so fun and then on the other hand remember these blues that I cut here um, out of the strip like wouldn't it be fun to just do all blues all denims navies denims as the background squares with the red and white going through and there's your patriotic quilt right or you could just do all light pinks, like do pinks and do red, and it would be like a Valentine quilt. And, you know, that's just with the red squares, but you can, I've seen it done, and I actually made one, and you can do all oranges right here, and do blacks, or steel, and it's a great Halloween quilt. You can do, you can find Christmas fabric, I've seen it done in Cozy Christmas, I have a quilt like this out of Cozy Christmas. Um, you can just, you can do actual, um, holiday prints you know in this quilt but I think it works best just colors like just decide what the holiday colors are like I said right red white and blue or green and red and white or things like that so that's just an idea for that and it's just kind of fun how just this little segment right here and then just cutting squares from a 10 inch square or your five inch strips from your basket can make this block, this very simple block that is so versatile. And once you sew these four together, this is another one block wonder that's in that section of my uh, Scrappiness is Happiness book because you literally can make a king size, a baby quilt, whatever size you need to make just by, you know, adding 16, 16 together one way and 16 together one way until you have the size that you want and sew as many blocks together as you want. So I hope you enjoyed that fun tutorial and that you like this strip setting right here. Uh, that's a fun way to do it when you're doing all the same colors together, the same print. And um, I think that's really fun. So let's talk about the schedule real quick before we go for next time. So... I hope you watched the last two, because this is week five, so I hope you watched week three and week four. I gave you those links in week two's video because I ha had already done those within my Sew Your Stash series. I had already done those tutorials, and so that's what we're going to go through this schedule. And so week five, so week six is going to be Lincoln Logs, which I've already done. So I will leave that link within this video description. The next week is the plaid block, which I have already done, so I will leave that link within this video description as well. Pumpkin patch, I have already done. The Santa hat, I have already done. The next one that I have not done yet is scrap apple. And so that is in week, let's see, that's week 10. I'm looking at my little notes over here. So that's week 10, and that week is going to be January 2nd. And so that's when I will be back here at the machine showing you how to do the scrap apple block. 
Of course, I'll be filming other things in between that don't have anything to do with the scrappiness is happiness so along. But I want you to um, be able to know that every week you can come to my channel here and see each tutorial for all of the blocks in this book. And so make sure um, that you're subscribed to my channel and that you hit the bell for the notifications. I've had a lot of people asking me and messaging me like on Instagram and things like that. Like I can't find where the tutorials are. I don't understand. You just, you just need to follow uh, or subscribe to my channel and so that you can see when they come up. And I am right here and always ready to show you how I make the blocks and how I sew scrappy. I hope you're enjoying this sew along and I will chat with you later.